I'm Beth McIntyre, I'm a curator in the art department and I've had the pleasure of working on this exhibition which is called Inside Stories, Quentin Blake. It's a temporary exhibition that we have here at the National Museum in Cardiff which explores the work of one of our best love illustrators, Quentin Blake. So we're thrilled to have this exhibition here which is a collaboration with the House of Illustration in London and we're delighted that Quentin Blake worked with us to create this wonderful interior he himself designed the walls and designed them specifically for our space to really bring it alive. You can see his characters fill the walls and some of them recognisable, maybe some of them not so, but it really brings the whole show together. So Quentin Blake's most famous collaboration is with the author Roald Dahl and their first book together was called The Enormous Crocodile, which was published in 1978. According to Quentin Blake, the two met in a publisher's room, and their relationship started with a very simple handshake. Roald Dahl had already written the book, and they were looking for an illustrator. Quentin Blake himself had already illustrated probably over 100 books by that stage, so he was quite well established too. They continued to work together right up until the end of Roald Dahl's life in 1990. And it's a collaboration that really developed and formed over that time. Roald Dahl would finish the books. He didn't talk about what he was writing, and then he would hand over the script. I think the process worked that the Quentin Blake actually developed the characters initially, and then Roald Dahl would comment on them. So they came from Quentin Blake's imagination. Obviously, he could read the books. Sometimes there's a lot of detail about the characters, what they wear, which he can pick up on. Sometimes there's not so much. So, for instance, when he later went on to do Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, there's no mention of his tie, but we all know that he wears a big bow tie. And they would discuss the characters and maybe they'd need alterating or developing further before you got to the final stage. The BFG is a good example because I don't think Roald Dahl thought that Quentin had quite got it right. So Quentin went to visit Roald Dahl in, um, in his home. And whilst they were there, they discussed the character. So initially, in some early illustrations which we have in the exhibition here, the BFG is wearing a long workman's apron. But in the final book, he's not wearing that apron, he's wearing a waistcoat. And one of the things that defines the character in the book is these wonderful sandals. And Quentin didn't know what footwear he would wear. And having left um, Roald Dahl's house and gone back home, a couple of days later, he said that he received a parcel in the post. And inside the parcel was just one sandal with a note saying, this is the sandal he would wear. So it's very much a collaboration. Roald Dahl always brings these dark, sinister characters into his books that really brings them to life. Quentin Blake actually brings them out of the darkness and onto the pages. So although they're horrible characters, the way he draws them makes them accessible to children and not as scary as they might be. He actually uses different techniques and different pencils and materials depending on the characters. So we know that the twits are horrible, scratchy people. So he draws them with horrible scratchy ink and that really comes over well. Or sometimes he'll use a really fluid watercolour. So depending on the style of the book and the characters, he'll change the way he draws them, which is a wonderful technique to use. But if I had to pick out one book, it would probably be Danny the Champion of the World. It's quite a different type of illustration and it's a lot more about watercolour and a landscape painting. And I suppose as a curator here of works on paper, these works naturally fit into the artworks that we have in the museum. I also think that he brilliantly painted night scenes, which are obviously a nightmare to try and draw. But by using blue and using these wonderful lights shining out of the torches, he really brings the whole story to life. And there's a lovely image that we have in the exhibition, which is just a picture of the different pens that he uses. So many different pens for the different characters. Yet when he goes back to draw that character again, he'll know which pen he used to draw it with in the first place. When you think of Roald Dahl books, you naturally think of Quentin Blake's illustrations. And when you think of Quentin Blake, you naturally think of Roald Dahl's books. They're joined together in this wonderful partnership that created these magical books that have been inspiring children for generations now and continue to do so.